Hi everyone, Urban Addiction again, or Dallas, I don't really care, and uh, it's uh, the 20th, September the 20th, and it's been exactly a week, which is exciting because I was able to do it a second time and uh, keep up with this, and apparently I wasn't just talking to myself, so that's kind of neat, and I was able to get up a forum on Ravelry, so I will be linking to that on here. Yeah, so a lot of stuff's happened in a week, I guess. At the same time, there hasn't been a lot of stuff happened in a week. Um, you can now find me, like I said, on a forum in Ravelry, and on Ravelry as me, and I think that's about it. Here on YouTube, um, I don't, I still haven't decided about the Facebook situation because, like I said, it's a personal Facebook. And I'm, not to say I'm picky, but I'm picky. <laughs> not, like, I let everyone have their, whatever they want to do on a Facebook, but I just, I'm a really carefree person, so I like to keep my, my social media that way, too. And, uh, I, I was thinking about, um, linking my Instagram here, though. Because I really need a reason to get on there every day and post, like, really just everyday pictures. Like, that's what Instagram is for, isn't it? And, um, I have a really hard time with that. So I kind of want to have a reason of getting on there more and posting daily pictures. Especially since it's terribly easy. And that will be about it, I think, for the where to find me stuff. Um, sorry for the lighting. Uh, it's Sunday here, and it's the evening, and my younger brother and sister go away for the night. My mom goes with them, my dad's working, so it's all, everyone's out of the house, and it just makes it so much easier if everyone's out of the house, and I get the house to myself to do these, because no one's walking in, and no one's asking me weird questions, and all the things that could be disastrous to one of these videos but that does mean I have to come downstairs and be with the family's dogs so that they're just not destroying things because they're like permanent two-year-olds no one tells you that when you're buying a dog that a dog is a permanent two-year-old think about it so I do apologize ahead of time if either of them or both of them go ballistic at one point during the video and lose their minds because they do that they're little dogs and if a leaf blows outside the window they have to make sure that I'm protected <laughs> um, but yeah let's get into all the fun stuff um, I know on the Ravelry group I was trying to do the whole like what are you into today stuff and and I'm, I'm hoping to still be really good with that and I really would love to see all the stuff everyone's working on because I want this not to be me talking to you, but I want it to be like a conversation. I want to know what you're doing on the other end of this computer. But, um, let's get into finished projects then. Uh, all the projects I showed you last week, never touched one of them this week, because that's how I roll. Um, really, I'm working on, um, a sewing project, which I've decided again why I hate sewing. I decided that I played smart, I thought, and hand sew a project bag. Do you know how many times I have stabbed myself with that needle? Do you know? It hurts. So bad. It. I will never be picking up a sewing needle again. At least for a couple months. Because when I went and bought this yarn, or yarn. I'm so used to just buying yarn. That's what I buy all the time. When I went and picked up this fabric, I picked up extra fabric for myself to make some project bags thinking oh I'll fall in love with sewing and I want to make myself project bags so yeah now I have fabric that I need to do something with I need to find a friend who's willing to sew my project bags or talk my little sister into learning to sew she's not on that bandwagon just yet uh, but for finished projects I did work on a order, another order. I My knitting group meets at Panera, and one of the girls that was working in Panera stopped me and asked if 
well, she loved my hat. And she actually stopped me and, and told me how much she loved my hat that I was wearing at the time. And asked me if I, if I, um, do, if I, if she ordered something, if I would, if I would make it, if she paid me. And I said, of course. And so I sent her, like, we emailed back and forth. And finally she decided on a headband. Like I said, it's ends are never sewn in. This is the headband. I don't know if you can see all the detail. Sorry, that was cold. Uh, there we go. Like, over here, you can see I worked in the back loops instead of the front loops, and it made this, like, cute little ribby kind of thing over here. Because this is crocheted. It's really blue, and it's freaking out my terrible, terrible computer lights and stuff. There we go. That's better. But, yeah, it's just a wonderful, easy way of doing that. It was nice. It was a different, it was a change up. But then in the middle, this is all just single crochet. I think in the pattern it calls for um, slip stitch there. And I'm sure it would look better if it was slip stitched, but I could not for the life of me get that to work properly and look nice. I am a stickler. I'd rather make the pattern different and have everything look really nice than to follow a pattern and have it just look off. So I changed it up. This is apparently the direction you wear it. I don't put it on because, first of all, it's not mine. And second of all, it would mess up my hair and I'm already having a bad hair day. <laughs> but yeah, so, yeah, it's a nice little change. I I personally, after, after seeing this, would have made this this direction and, and, like, moved the connecting area and then put a beautiful little, I love accessories, so I would have put, like, a big button on it or um, a flower or something really cool like that and actually I am making more headbands and I am going to be doing that but uh and I'll, I'll get to why I'm doing that later but that's that and then the other finished project not the cup but the cup cozy yay and then this is I just worked in the third loop in the back so it, it turned the front two over and it made this cool pattern um these are both on Pinterest, so give me a second as you all admire my handiwork. And I find them. I mean, I'm sure they're on Ravelry, but I have them liked on Pinterest, so that's where I was following it. Thank God I um, cleared out my likes recently. The This is the Frayed Knots 15 Minute Coffee Sleeve, and it literally takes 15 minutes. This is like 28 row uh, stitches and it is I made it nine rows it's supposed to be eight rows but I figured if I'm holding a cup of coffee the reason I'm putting a cozy on it is because it's probably either really hot or maybe really cold and I I don't want to feel that against my hands so I want it to be big enough that if I wrap my hands around it for the most part it's covering where I'm touching so that's, that was my idea behind making it longer. And then the headband, I liked it further back. <laughs> the headband is, of course I have to then click into it. It couldn't be one of those ones where it just says it right on it. Last week I was so organized and this week I was in a rush. Okay. It's called Mama Chi Crochet Patterns, and this is just a free crochet pattern. I'm not. Oh, here we go. The Everly Head Wrap. That's what it's called. The Everly Head Wrap. But like I said, I'll I'll find them other places. Or I'll find them on Pinterest, and I will put it down in the notes section here. And like I did last week. I hope that was good enough for everyone. And. uh and it's, again, a really easy pattern. This is 12, 12 rows. So it's really fast. I mean, 12 rows, I think it's like 60 or 70 um, things. This, If I worked on it straight through and I didn't keep ripping it out like I did, it would have taken probably an hour or two. And that's it. It's really fast. It's really simple. Oh, and I made this out of Heart Soft because she wanted it to be, like, this kind of blue and this is the closest blue I could find so I personally wouldn't 
because it's like a six dollar skein of yarn and any yarn that has to purposely make itself soft I don't know something about that and then charge you double the price because they made it soft for you something about that just doesn't sound cool and I like stuff that's cheap I don't know I know like there's cheaper yarns out there that feel just the same as this so I the only reason I got it is again because she wanted this color and it was on sale that day so I got it for like two or three dollars so yeah, that's that's the definite finished projects for this week that are knitting related. For finished projects that are not actual knitting stuff, um, I worked on this week a, a swap. I'm in the middle of doing a swap. I love, I probably do two or three swaps a year just because I love getting stuff in the mail. It's like adult Christmas every time something shows up at my door. I hand dyed. It's a little less blue and a little bit more purple. Sorry again for this terrible, terrible lighting. But, um, what is it? What is the site called? I, as you admire my yarn, let me get on to Ravelry. I didn't mean to talk about the swap group. That's why this one is definitely not up. But, of course, of course you're not. Sorry, our neighbors are apparently doing jumping jacks. This is half of a house, and our neighbors are through that that um, wall. And she literally sounds like she's doing jumping jacks, like up against our wall right now. Hopefully, that's not coming across like on this thing. That'd be terrible. I'd have to go tell them about themselves because it's our house. But it's the odd duck swaps. They're amazing. Like, they're huge. And they usually have them going on, like, three of them a month. So you can always, like, look ahead and see which ones you want to do and then do them. And so I'm in the zombie, witches, vampires, something like that group. But it ended up becoming, like, a Halloween sort of theme. And anything that was scary got thrown in. Which is kind of neat because I'm not terribly into, like, some of it. But I love, like, werewolves and... Vampires and zombies. Not a big, you know, ghost fan. But, uh, so I made this because the, the girl I got is into witches. So it, in person it looks purple and, and green. Which, she likes purple and purple and green is totally witch colors. And, um, oh, and crochet hooks. With handles, I made the handles, of course. Um, this, I mean, a fang. Because what vampire or werewolf doesn't have a bloody fang? That's coming out terribly. <laughs> I'm going to have to do this somewhere else late, or do it earlier, one or the other. Hopefully next week. My boyfriend's house is amazing. It will be so perfect for this. Maybe I'll start uh, taping these on Saturday, Sunday mornings and take all my computers with me because their house is so full of light compared to this one. But yeah, there's a fang and a dagger. The, I mean, I'm painting it in sections so the paint's not completely where I want it to be, especially on the dagger. But I ran out of the nice red and I keep finding just pinks in our house. So, those are those. That uh, is, again, in this swap. Because, like, I, I like to make all my stuff for my swaps if I can. Because, I don't know, it's cheaper so they get more, I feel like. Like, if I'm buying things, I might only be able to buy two or three items. But if I can half the cost and make three or four, four more items for that box, I feel like that's better. Maybe I'm wrong in thinking that. But then, I also decided I wanted to make Sharpie mugs. This one's mine. And it's all covered in monsters. Really, it was just me practicing. I have a nice cup of coffee in there right now. And then, for my swappy. Some spiders, some bats, an upside down spider, I know. I don't know what I was thinking other than the fact that I was doing it upside down. A cauldron, some more bats, and then of course, double, double, toil and trouble, fire, 
what is that? Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Sorry, I was reading it backwards and I could only make it so far. But yeah. And it was pretty cool. I looked it up and the way it said to do it is, I mean, the basics is a mug, a Sharpie, you draw whatever you want on it and you bake it. But then I was like, this can't be this easy or everyone would be doing it. So I looked into it some more and apparently there's like, there's like, you can do it that way, but it's trickier than just th slapping some Sharpie on it and throwing it in the oven. Like... The Sharpies, you should always do it once, let it dry, go over it a second time. Do you know how hard it is to rewrite letters a second time? It's terrible. And also, the cheaper the cup, the better it is, which is weird, because you're thinking the more expensive, the nicer it will be. But really, apparently, the glazes on these, the more expensive that they are, the thicker the glaze. And you're trying to get it underneath the glaze. So... You really actually want the cheaper ones, not the more expensive ones. Which I picked all mine up at Target and they seemed to do fine. They were like the $3 cups. So yeah. And then, oh, and you wash it all beforehand. Always wash it all beforehand. Just to get all that grime off of it and make sure it's nice and dry. And then, after you do it a second time, you heat the oven up to like 400 degrees, 420. I think everything else tells you like 350, but it's actually the hotter the better. But like 400 was about the best, she said. And you actually let them heat up with the oven and you let them cool down with the oven. And that helps you from like them cracking or breaking. Um, what I did notice is this is actually purple, that deep, that nice bright purple, but it dulled out to like a muddy purple. My black didn't turn brown, but that happens sometimes. Um, this was a light blue. Now it's a greenish. And let me see if I can find, um, this was a bright blue. It turned, like, gray. That happens. But it was neat. It was neat to, sorry. I just ate a piece of my hair. Sorry. <laughs> and, uh... But, um, yeah, it was neat to kind of do some different crafts this weekend, this week. Like, that's another reason I love the swaps. It, like, it makes me want to do other crafting that I don't normally do on a daily basics. Like, I would never have made these coffee mugs if I didn't have to do this swap. And I would have, I've made the handles, but I wouldn't have made these handles if it wasn't for these swaps. And now I want an entire s selection of vampire hooks. Just because I want to be like, ha ha, I have a wolf tooth. <laughs> but um and the dyeing I love to dye I don't get to do it very often because I don't have any purpose for it but I love it so it was nice to do all that for a change and have a reason other than just because I wanted to do it that's about all of those like finished or almost finished projects uh, the only thing that I thought I could do for an unfinished project this week that isn't just from last week and still isn't finished is um, my biggest project. Sorry for all the crinkling if you can hear the crinkling. But I have a never ending project and it is called the Hexapuff Blanket. I'm about 150 Hexapuffs in. This is only one. The way I do it is I make hexa, the Hexa Flats. I don't make Hexapuffs, I make Hexa Flats. I make each individual one of these little dudes. And then when I get, like, usually, like, a hundred, about a hundred of them, I try, the more the better, in my mind, before I do these. But then I take those, I take, how many's in here? Seven. I take seven of them, I put them together like this, so it makes, like, this flower. And I'm slightly anal. I don't like there to be too many of the same colors, if I can help it. I like to kind of balance out, like, stripes with non-stripes, but sometimes you can't help it. Then once I get enough of these... I usually put seven of those together and make, it comes out to be about this shape, and then I square it off with extra ones. And you can see, like, I try not to have too many of the same colors going on, nothing touching each other, my sheep is upside down, and then when I get really bored, I like to go back in and um, duplicate stitch with embroidery floss, some of my cuter patterns, like there is a sheep, and here's a bunny. 
here's just some let's see if this will show up here's just some stitch work some stitch pattern work that I was working on um, this is backwards for you guys but this is a D um, me and my boyfriend's names both start with D's and actually both of our last names start with B's so it's just a little thing I've always done is like D's and B's uh, do I have another? Yes, a little baby lion. That should... Oh, and a spider. His name is Boris. Boris the spider, because who is the best band ever? <laughs> if you know what that is. But, um... Here is my gigantic bag. I don't think my hexa blanket is in here. I have a second hexa blanket that's missing at the moment. I'm going to open this up and see. Yes, it's in here. See, I have two of these patches. I think each patch is about 60. So maybe I have more like 200. I might have closer to 200 of these now. I've only been working on it for, you know, like four years. But here's my other hexaflats. You can see there's a wolf and there's Tigger. There's some Harry Potter. There's a tree. And there is a Doctor Who bow. Oh, and my, my uh, octopus. It's right here. He's a little harder to see. Now, this one's also have the hexa flats because I want my edges to be pretty flat like this. And if you can see on this one, my backs are not uh, sewed in. I kind of like them to be left out and funky like that. Just because it was easier. I was getting really confused with not leaving them out. And I feel like, I don't know, it's just, it makes me less concerned if I have to, like, pull one of these out and uh, fix it up. I know I can just sew it back in. But yeah. It's literally my longest ongoing project ever. But it is one of the coolest longest ongoing projects ever. I'm just like rooting through my box now. I love... I end up with like lots of little extras. I buy them and sometimes I sell them if I have too many of one color. Um, they come in like mini swaps. Uh, let's see here. I also love, my favorite is um, Socks That Rock. I don't knit socks, but my friends always, some of my friends had some of these, and they gave them to me. Not like the whole skeins, but like they had made socks and they had leftovers. So they gave them to me, and I fell in love with it. And so now every year, I go to Maryland Sheep and Wool, and every year when I'm there, I allow myself to pick up at least one or two skeins. I think this year I picked up two, at least two. I might have picked up a third one. The year before, I maybe had an entire armful of it, but yeah. And so, especially with whole skeins like this, I'll break them down and I'll sell off like whole bags of them, of different like minis, and then use that money to buy more minis. Do, do you get? Do you see how this is a ongoing problem? <laughs> but like, how can you resist? This is cute. This is adorable. But I do see I was working on one last time I was here and you can see I'm working on them I do the three needles DPNs just because I feel like I've tried the magic loop I'm sure there's people out there yelling at me that magic loop is so easy but to me it's not it's really confusing there's a lot of needles there's a lot of cord going on and I just can't focus whereas this is very straightforward it's on a needle I'm used to working on needles it's all right here um I do, I don't even know what the bind one is called. I've just done it so long that I just do it. And I do a three needle bind off, not the crochet bind off that she shows. Which is, I think, like the same thing, basically. Just, you use a hook instead of a needle. So I don't know if there is a difference. But yeah, and like I said, I do the hexa flats and not the stuffies. A lot of people stuff them. And I was stuffing them in the beginning, but then, I don't know, I was getting really anal about how much stuffing was in one and not the other so I just stopped it was easier and yeah oh and I was knitting so hard when I first started that I was actually bending um, other DPNs so when I was at the Maryland Ship and Wool about two years ago I stopped at the signature table and I picked up this pair of needles and um, I basically was like do they bend and they were like what and I was like, no, do you, you don't understand. I'm knitting them so hard. Like, 
like I knit so long and I knit so hard that I'm bending needles and they said we've never had that happen with our needles and I was like well I knit with them hours a day like it's worth the cost they're expensive I think these are the full set and they're about sixty dollars but I knit like I said I knit between an hour and five or six hours a day knitting that long I deserve to have really good tools. You wouldn't tell someone who's working on cars to buy the cheap stuff at the no-name brand store. You would say, yeah, you totally deserve having the name brand stuff to work on all day long with your cars. So why shouldn't I have the best that they can get in needles? Which I know these might not be your best, but they're my best. And so I deserve to have my best. If you like the other ones, I don't care. Like the other ones. <laughs> but you deserve to have the best for you and so when I mean $60 was a lot of money to me but I've had them now for two years I knit with them for hours a day they have more than paid off for themselves and at one point I I basically um, saved up and I now have complete sets my mom has a heart attack every time I tell her I'm buying another set of these because she has told me multiple times she has bought cars for cheaper than I buy my needles. But again, you wouldn't tell the person buying the car they should buy the cheapest car, they should buy the car that they need. <laughs> but yeah, I just figured I'd throw that out there that these are really great needles. And like I said, I have a whole set of the DPNs. I get the larger size too because I have larger hands. And I have the whole set of the circulars. Now the circulars I'm not as happy with be, just because of the way the convertibles are set up, that the fact that I couldn't get one small enough to knit hats on. That's my only complaint. Because I like to knit hats and I like to knit my hats on circulars, I don't like the idea that I can't knit my my hats on my signatures. That's my only complaint with that. But they're great. Like my uh, sweater is on one of them, so that's great. And the only issue I've ever had with signatures, I was knitting last year's sweater. I was knitting really hard, really fast, um, and the cord snapped right at the, let me see, I have, I'm pretty sure I have my project in here, and I can show you where, it's not the same set of needles, but I can show you what happened. So like, on a signature convertible, they screw apart right here, and right here, which is why they're not, they're called convertibles and not interchangeables. Interchangeables, they would come off right here and not be part of the needle which means they don't grab like I have other um, interchangeable needles and when you're knitting they tend to really grab and snag at that point where they connect to your needle these don't have as much snag to them like I would still say there's a tiny tiny bit of snag but not like on your other ones I'm trying to yeah yeah there's a little bit of a snag but it's not bad but when I was knitting, it snapped right here. So it was basically snapping right at the most tension. I freaked out. I was in the middle of a, a desperate project. Like, how could this snap on me? And, and how could they send me a faulty thing? But I was very nice. I sent them a message to their customer service explaining to them that I, what the problem is that I was having. Should I send them back my cord? What should I do? They basically said, send us a picture of the damage. Tell us what needle size it was, what cable length it is, and we'll have it out to you ASAP. They never, as soon as I sent them the picture, they never questioned. They never made me send anything back. There was no charge, of course. They just sent me a new cable. It was great. So I always have to recommend that they even have pretty great customer service. But um, the only issue I've ever had with them, and it's not even been my issue, is they're elitist. They, they know their product is really good, and they treat themselves as such. And I'm sorry. I knit really hard on my stuff. My stuff is great. If I knew I had a great product, I, I would be talking it up like that. <laughs> but yeah, that's about that's about all the cool stuff for this week. Um, sorry, it's cluttered. And now I'm just like, before I'm ending this, I'm like, clean it up. Clean up my workspace. Oh, I never told you guys why I'm making cup cozies and why I'm making more headbands. And now I feel like I'm just talking about nothing forever but um uh one of my friends tagged me in a um like a facebook invite thing and so did um 
And so when I went to look at it, it's a craft fair. And so I've never done a craft fair. Like, I've never done a real one. Like, my, my church has put on really tiny ones. And I would, like, take a couple things and set up a tiny table. But, like, there was ten people. So I've always really wanted to do my own craft fair, like a real one with a real table, and have, like, a display and my name out there. Part of me is, like, already spending tons of money because I want to have my own banner and I want to look really professional for not a professional setting. But, um, which I probably won't do a banner, but I probably will have my business card. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm putting together a lot of little stuff and I don't know. Maybe that will be one of my discussions I'll put up this week. Like, what are some really great easy crochet patterns? Because I'm just crocheting. I'm not knitting because knitting for me takes too long. And crochet is really fast and really easy. And I need a lot of stuff in, like, two months. So maybe I'll put up a discussion of, like, what's your favorite really fast pattern? Like, baby patterns and, or baby, yeah, baby patterns. Like, all the baby patterns and uh, adult hats, especially, like, slouchies and things that are really in the fashion right now. And um, headbands and coffee cozies and little things that I can make up really fast. Maybe that will be one of my discussions. And we'll, we'll share back and forth some patterns. But, yeah, that's about everything this week. I'm trying to see. They were really good. So, maybe they'll come in here and they'll have a high. Come here. Come here. Because you'll see him sooner or later on all of the Instagrams. Say hi, Slinks. Say hi, buddy. Say bye. Bye.